Hey, -o, let's try this again. This time, I think I have the time right. We're starting off at two, and we're gonna be having Doug Smiley on from Under Armour. So this should be great, and he's there. So let's go ahead and connect him in. Hey, what's up, Doug? Hey, thanks, Tom. So uh, as people are joining on, and it seems like they are, um, let's get a little bit more information on your background. Sure. And right now you're actually currently with Under Armour. Yep. But I'm guessing that's not where you started. No, no, everybody's got an interesting path in, uh, in this industry. So I started in 2002, uh, I moved to Boston for grad school. Uh, collegiate rower, you know, ran for sports, really liked it and looking for a part-time work in Boston and I got a job selling shoes at City Sports, uh, just working in the Harvard Square store on the, uh, the shoe floor and, you know, right away loved it. I mean, runners are coming in, you're connecting with them, you're finding the right solutions. So loved the interaction and then uh, saw the guy, the buyer at the time who gave a shoe clinic, this guy, Sean Scales, who's now at New Balance. And I'm like, this guy's got the coolest job ever. Uh, <laughs> So I stayed five years in the stores, just working on the shoe floor, running the shoe department, and then five years as the running buyer. And then in 2012, I moved over to Mizuno. So I moved down to Atlanta, headed up the North American running footwear market there. Uh, great experience there. And after three years down there, uh, my now wife and I, we moved back to Boston and I was at Saucony for four years. And then we decided to make a West. And so that brought us to Under Armour, which has a satellite campus out in, uh, out in Portland. And so I've been there since September. So great experience so far. Awesome. So fairly new to Under Armour. Fairly new to Under Armour. Yeah. Uh, from my experience at City Sports as a buyer, uh, got to work with them a lot as far as, you know, like when Under Armour running first launch, I was there. So we worked collaboratively and it was interesting. My reps at the time are now still at Under Armour in different positions. So we kind of reconnected there. Uh, but yeah, I've always known people in the brand, but still pretty new to within Under Armour. Yeah, awesome. Now that city sports that you're talking about in Boston, that was that was a that was a cool store. I mean, I don't know if too many people went there. It was for me that was like a Macy's or something, but just for sport. It didn't feel like a Dick's or anything like that. It had a nice. Yeah, and it's kind of like they're definitely ahead of their time as far as saying they wanted to talk target the kind of urban athletes, kind of that younger metro consumer. Uh, and it was just a lot of fun. You know, we were in up and down the East Coast from Atlanta to, you know, open the store in Harbor East. We're in Baltimore for a little yeah. while. Uh, and being based in Boston and just always being around the energy of running and, you know, getting to work with the brands and collaborates on launches and product and stuff like that. So totally awesome experience. Yeah. When people talk about retail and where it's going, unfortunately, the city sports going out of Harbor East, it's kind of a loss because live, I live in the city. I live in Baltimore. And there's no place that you can go to like pick up a Frisbee or, you know, uh, you know, just something to go to the parks with, you know? Yeah. Uh, you know, City Sports was founded by two college guys who couldn't find a needle to pump up their basketball. And that kind of sparked this, this huge chain. So yeah, really cool story. But yeah, I think, I think there's a certain loss there when those places go away and you can't find those, those basic needs in the city. Awesome. Hey, so for the people that are watching, Doug, I'm going to tell them there's a question mark on top of the little question mark. Doug and I are gonna talk for a little while, but if you use that button to ask your question, when we finish talking, we'll go and we'll do some Q&A and wrap up with that. So if you have a question for Doug or a question about Under Armour or Under Armour running, which I'm sure lots of you do, um, hit that button, put it in, and we will get to those towards the end. But right now, obviously, Under Armour has basically, it's a split campus. You have the Baltimore, and then you have uh, out in Oregon, and I forget, is it, is it in, um, I, what, what was the race we did out there by the mountain? Um, uh, Forest Park, or? No, it was, the, it was the Mountain Series Challenge. We did the, uh, what's the big, what's the big uh, mountain out there? Mountain Hood? Yeah, not, yeah, that was it. How far, but you're not near that, right? No, no. I mean, we're right in, we're technically in Portland proper and in Southwest close to Portland State University. Uh, so we are connected to the city. And, you know, there's a track right in front of us where a lot of the elites train and just a lot of the community gets out there. Uh, and it's typical Portland. I mean, if you want to hit the trails, those are close by. If you want some good track workouts or else you could hit to the river. Uh, so, yeah, you're right in the heart of a really good running city. 
So, I mean, you've experienced Boston, which is probably one of the heaviest running cities in, in the United States. I mean, we're starting to see some challenges from like Austin and uh, some other Boulder, obviously. Yeah. How, did, how does the West Coast in Portland compare? Uh, it's interesting. Definitely reflecting back in my experience in Boston, uh, just remembering like, you know, the Thursday night 5Ks and stuff like that of how club driven it really was in Boston. Uh, between Cambridge Running Club, Somerville Striders, BAA. It's like everybody kind of had, you know, their team and their kits and they're out there. Where I'd say Portland's a little more kind of spread out, a little more dispersed with run clubs. There's a few influential ones, uh, but you're more likely to, to go to a race and see an elite there competing along with everyone else. So, you know, Portland's relatively small in Boston, so it, it just over-indexes if you're out there for a run on Horse Park on Saturday, you're probably going to see you know, a few sponsored athletes and definitely some people you know out there. So it's, it's, it's a lot easier to kind of get that critical mass of runners in one place at one time in Portland. Cool. And I'm just going to ask, you worked at Mizuno. Yep. And Fritz worked at Mizuno and then worked for Under Armour. Yep. Have you guys, did you guys cross paths at all? Yeah, no, Fritz was actually, you know, I got to work with them a lot on the retail side at City Sports. And then uh, him and a guy, Rod Foley, were the ones who took me down to Atlanta. And so, yeah, you know, great guy. You know, we talked both about our Mizuno experience and then our, our Under Armour experience as well. So, yeah, still keep in touch quite a bit. Yeah. Fritz is a good guy. I really enjoy uh, talking with Fritz. He's actually got an article that he's writing for us that's going to be published on our site soon, so it's pretty cool. Um, so, okay, so now we're going to shift over to Under Armour sure. and your experience there. As you're kind of new, you you're not probably responsible for a lot of the product that they have hitting the market right now, currently. I can take no credit for anything going on now. <laughs> so I'm guessing that you're coming in and you may have some ideas and you might be pushing for some stuff that we're maybe not seeing from Under Armour right now. Like right now, I would think Under Armour has the Machina yep. and um, Sonic 3 should be coming out. Sonic 3 is out now, yeah. And Sonic uh, uh, is number 21. Okay. What what other what else is out right now from Under Armour in that category? Uh, you know, you Machina can. was a big launch we had uh, February seventh, which has been phenomenal. Brand new shoe for us. Uh, Infinite, which is kind of our everyday neutral trainer at one hundred twenty dollars. The second Infinite came out in February, so that's currently in the market. Uh, the Velocity Three is coming out within a few weeks, but that's our kind of performance responsive, a uh, little more tempo shoe as well. So those are the big ones. <laughs> market and then fall winter 20 we got some pretty cool trail stuff and we're also launching a complete track and field line so that's tremendously exciting so when you say track and field you're talking spikes flats spikes you know jumps throws spikes everything you need uh and this came from really you know we work with a lot of our college partners with wisconsin notre dame ucla and you know when we started off we didn't have a complete lineup so you know they're wearing our kits but they're wearing somebody else's shoes and this is something that was pretty amazing before I got there, but two guys, Dave Rulo, our design director and Bjorn Beagle made in development, basically just kind of sequestered themselves for 18 months, you know, spent a ton of time just visiting these colleges, working with coaches, working with athletes, and really kind of just working with this, this goal of completing the athletes. So they created a whole track and field line from, you know, I got some of the stuff right here, but like the Sprint Pro, which is our, you know, 100 200 meter spike with a full plate there with a shake i mean down. it's hard it's hard to not look at a spike like spikes are beautiful <laughs> <laughs> yeah and this is something too where it's just like the designer is like you know it's their passion but it's also such precision with creating this product as far as the pin placement and the composition of the plate and just how we form the upper and of course delivering the right weight uh okay. so awesome project uh you know the whole lineup is going to launch like i said and fall, winter 20, and complement our cross-country product. Uh, and the, the feedback's been phenomenal. You know, it's pretty cool to have the athletes with us every step of the way, both collegially and a lot of our pros and flag staff and other parts of the country have been great with input on this as well. Yeah, and we just had Aisha, Aisha on. Um, you know, she came on from Camelback, but obviously yeah. she's an Under Armour uh, athlete as far as shoes and gear. Um, it, what is she going to be running in of – of the shoes that you just showed us is she running in that or so there's a she's looking at the shakedown is probably going to be one of her she's she's going to be in so that's got the four foot plate four pins we also have something that i don't have here 
more in the miler zone that, uh, that's going to come out a little later, and that's another one she's looking forward to. And when she's doing the steeple, we're looking at a, a special design for her, too. It's a little more drained. Oh, is she going back in the steeple? No, I mean, this is when she was still still in the event. And we yeah. had a so it's one of those great things. You have these connections with athletes, so it's pretty easy just to, you know, if she wants to train in something and just, you know, work through it, we can create a product for her there. Awesome. So, all right. So moving in, we're going back to what the daily training that everybody's going to run in. It's yeah. neat to see you guys focusing on performance. And I'm guessing, you know, you take that stuff where you're going, okay, we're going to focus on the track spikes. We're going to focus on having a complete set for our colleges. The end goal has to be how do we transfer that knowledge and that work down through a functional uh, everyday runner trainers for, for the mass public. Am, am I right? Yeah, totally. And, you know, right about 2018, 2019, there was kind of a reset within the brand before I got there of just kind of, you know, we had been driven by a lot of innovation. We've had a lot of great product, but people would, you know, really find something they love, but then there would be no continuity to it maybe. And then like after two years, it's gone and they're, they're searching for it online at their, their, or at their local run specialty. So we kind of decided in the high performance category, just really set that baseline, really establish the franchises come up with best practices from collar heights to foams to, to vamp length to everything to really just make a consistent experience and build it all around a consistent last. So we're gonna have a consistent fit throughout our lineup and not really deviate from that. And so that was really the starting point for high performance. And that was, she's like the Sonic, the Infinite, the Guardian, which is the more supportive version of the Sonic. And then that baseline, once that was established, that's allowed us to introduce new franchises like the Machina which was kind of a white space concept where kind of the working concept was FSL, which is faster, softer, lighter. Of Could you create a, a plated shoe that has a lot of propulsion, but still has some of the characteristics of an everyday trainer? And now you guys, one of your proprietary foams or the foams that you guys put a lot of uh, attention to is the hover. Yeah. Is that something that we're going to see evolve in the next round? Yeah, even, you know, I got some my beat up hairs here, but even for the Machina that just hit the market, this is the first shoe where we don't have the carrier foam for hover. So this is really full 360 degree hover. So essentially it's basically a system with, with hover where you're gonna have the hover foam, which is tremendously lightweight, resilient, kind of gives you great cushioning, zero gravity feel. And then around it, we kind of sort of with this energy web. And so basically that encases the hover, returns the energy back up to the runner once you make that impact and you kind of rebound. Traditionally, you know, we've had the carrier foam two, which is a denser EVA, which gives us you a little more structure, a little more guidance. But in that, we kind of encase the hover. And so the Machina was really that first shoe where we said, hey, what happens if we take off that carrier foam and really deliver more hover here? And so we're definitely looking at new possibilities for, you know, we just briefed in our Spring Summer 22 lineup. And even before that, you're gonna see some diff different iterations and different evolutions of hover. So still a lot of growth within that technology. All right, so with the shoes that you're working on, they're probably coming out. What are you looking at, 2021 or 2022? Yeah, I, I opted midstream on spring summer 21. So the product was already in motion. So worked on color and some of the finishing touches there. Uh, fall winter 21, the briefs had already been written. So I had some contribution there. But spring summer 22 is kind of, you know. That's when we're going to see the uh, smiley collection. <laughs> yeah, so that's when I kind of like get to, to take a full landscape and dive in. But that's awesome. How yeah. much input, uh, and you, you know, if we ask a question that you don't want to answer, you just say you don't want to answer, but how much input are you coming in? And obviously you have some legacy stuff for 2021. How much do you get to like creatively, like really dive and dig your teeth into, uh, like 2022? Is this going to be like a full, like you're looking at it? Yeah, no, I, I think coming in, it was just like, it really blew me away from the outside too. It was just like, how far we had advanced with Under Armour of like how much more consistent the shoes had got because it had been a few years since I had really tried an Under Armour shoe. Uh, but amazed of just like seeing the growth and, you know, even working with our athletes and our, our college partners where just getting them in the shoes on a regular basis and them being like, wow, this is, you know, the infant is great. Don't change this. And them really loving the experience. That's really put us in a good spot. And, you know, looking at our long-term plan, we think in order to be authentic, we have to be consistent in the experience. So we're definitely pretty precise on some styles where, you know, we work with athletes, we work with our consumer insights group and the feedback is like, Hey, you know, there's a lot of great things here. You could change this 10%. And then there's other stuff where it's just like, 
you know, the direction's off or really we're not executing it as much as we can. So, so what can we improve? Uh, but a lot of it is, is kind of what you expect of how can we make the shoes lighter? How can we use better, more dynamic materials? Kind of all that stuff we need to. Uh, but yeah, I definitely don't want to steer the brand off. You know, I think we're in a great direction. So <laughs> keep it yeah. the and technology and incorporating technology into the shoes has always been kind of like a hallmark of yeah. Under Armour. You guys started with the bra factory shoe. Yeah. Uh, you know, the wrap. Um, I think I still have. Yeah, I still have this. This was probably my favorite Under Armour shoe uh, at the time. I mean, I'm guessing this was 2010, 2011, maybe. Yeah, I think maybe a little later, but yeah, still pretty early. Yeah, maybe later. I was trying to tie it into the Born to Run movement because it wasn't long after that. Yeah, yeah. You know, anatomical <laughs> of it. But so you guys started with this as kind of like the technology. And then obviously we've moved up into like some of the stuff like the Sonic. And I don't have the current model of Sonic handy, but this guy's here where it has the map my run feature and the, the, you know, the chip inside and even the infinite. And those are even more advanced than the Machina um, as far as not needing to run with a watch, saving the data and syncing it up to map my run. Are these initiatives that are, you feel like are carried through the brand that will move on into the next shoe round? Totally. Yeah. Connected fitness is a huge part of our strategy. Uh, you know, the team's based in Austin, Texas, and we work really closely with them. Uh, but it's a huge kind of unique selling proposition. It's something that differentiates us where, you know, more than anyone that's looking for the shoes behind you, like there's more options for the runner than ever before. And so what are those real benefits to give to, to make them better at what they do? And that's really kind of who we're focused on, on those people who want to get better through running. And connected fitness is, is a huge, huge win. The fact that, you know, it comes with the shoes. So $120 shoe, you're still getting all the technology where you don't need to watch or anything else. All you have to do is sync it with your app on your phone, and then you could run untethered as well. So you don't even have to run with your phone. You come back, you sync it up, and you get all the metrics you need to. So, so a really cool feature there. And yeah, that's, that's a big part of the strategy going forward. Is anything tied in? I, it might be now, but does the app tell you if it's time to buy a new pair of shoes? No, I mean, we, we talked a lot about that, of like the break time, down time and some of that, uh, but nothing where we're saying like, hey, you hit 300 miles and in time for a new one. Yeah, I'm thinking more that it could tell like biomechanically your 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 stride is shifting, your, you know, yeah. maybe, yeah. I don't know. We're getting into real-time form coaching, so more looking at stride length, you know, foot strike angle and all that stuff. So it's really over the course of the run where we're kind of looking at the data and not over the lifetime of the shoe. Uh, but this is something where it's a really collaborative group with the, uh, the connected team in Austin and us. So that's, if we pitch it to them, it's something they could definitely look for in future seasons. That's cool. Yeah. All right. So what style of shoe are you most into, uh, right now? Like if you were going to pick like a, a perfect makeup of a shoe, are you more say like the speed, the velocity side, or are you more cushion daily? Definitely, definitely more on the velocity. I've always just, you know, kind of gravitated towards those shoes from, a, you know, DS Trainer and Zoom Sweat Vapor and, and some of that stuff. And, you know, from Mizuno is the Precision and the Elixir and some of those. So that's, that's always where I, I've really found my wheelhouse. And, you know, but the upside is you look at kind of the step up of those everyday neutral trainers and everything's gotten so much lighter. So it's like you can still get that weight used to having a performance shoe, but now, you know, you get a lot more cushion and a lot more shoe to it. Yeah, it's a, it, we were just uh, finishing up a video review of a competitor brand shoe today, and I noted that the stack height was a lot thicker, but mm -hmm. it's a new foam and, uh, from the previous iteration. And I'm like, you get more cushioning at about the same weight and obviously more durability with that as well because the higher stack uh, as far as feel. Um, yeah. And I'm like, that, this is where the foams are going. I think that that's the exciting thing. So that's, you know, leading back into the hover. Are you guys experimenting with other uh, phones as well? There's hover we're looking at. Uh, yeah, and I think with, like I said, within hover and working with Dow, there's a lot of upside on how we could do that as far as, it's kind of looking at the different components we have working with it with. What can we do with the energy web as far as tightening and expansion and, you know, possibly that becomes more zonal or, you know, kind of we discover something through our innovation lab of something that really benefits the runner. Uh, within the foams too, we're always looking, like I said, how can this become lighter? You know, we still want to keep all the properties, but you know, the market is moving at hyperspeed now as far as how light shoes are getting and still delivering a lot of cushioning. So that's definitely an endeavor. 
and also it would choose like the machina of just the degree or even if we use the carrier foam. But yeah, hover is kind of that mainstay cushioning. That's kind of this pillar we build around as far as these shoes should just enable you to run longer. You know, if like you're planning that, that 10 mile test run and you get out there and you want to go 15, this doesn't feel, the shoe feels so good under feet, under foot. That's awesome. So are you guys, any new athletes that we're going to see coming out uh, Under Armour uh, wearing the shoes this, this uh, I guess, with the Olympic trials being on kind of hold, it's, it, uh, what's going on with the, with that side of the, the yeah. biz? You know, one of our athletes who runs for Ireland, Stephen Scullion, he's already qualified for the marathon. Uh, so I think he's just got to, you know, wait a little longer than he wanted to to get out there. And then, you know, trials in Eugene put aside, you know, some of our athletes who are, who are gearing up for that have to wait a little longer too. Uh, so one in the marathon that we know of right now, but then for the rest, we'll have to wait and see next summer whether they, they qualify. Yeah. Uh, and uh, do you guys have any insight on, or are you in, as much in the dark as we are? as far as when stuff is going to resume and yeah no, yeah we're we're a little more separated from that you know like our sports marketing team works with us but uh you know it's it hasn't we have waited for an answer it hasn't slowed down our product creation process we're just going to keep moving on things and when we get the answer and we'll get it then yeah and speaking of that like being on the slowdown are any of the shoes that were scheduled to release from this year going to be paused or released later no, I mean, currently all plans are go. You know, I think it's looking at, you know, more how we bring them to market and, you know, kind of what's the right manner and the right tone and, you know, what are the right outlets? You know, we've seen definitely, you know, it's tough to see run, especially our best partners having to, to rework the strategy and just, you know, they're juggling a lot right now in terms of inventory and, and launching. And, you know, we're heavily reliant on events to draw people in, whether it's marathon expos and, you know, fun run nights with our field X team. So it's just, I think, really rethinking the strategy for at least the rest of the year. And then hopefully things get a little more normalized in spring, summer 21. And we get back on the cadence of in-store activations and, you know, launching on our usual platforms. Yeah, I'm sure you're seeing the same news that we get, that there is a, another running boom going on right now. And that people are, aren't, it, it's the only thing to do, uh, you know, until uh, uh, gyms open back up or, you know, what other forms of exercise you have. So there's people coming in to run. There's people that maybe need, you know, don't, they might be running in old basketball shoes or in trainers that they've had forever. And I, I think there is definitely a space for education and um, getting the right shoes on, on people's feet so that they enjoy running more. Totally. Yeah. yeah. I've seen in, like, I'm sure you've seen in Baltimore, you see it in Portland, like, five o'clock is run o'clock. It's like everybody finishes their, their video conferences. And then, then it's, it's packed with people getting out there running for, you know, we try to, of course, get it done early in the morning, but there's absolutely a running boom happening right now. We've talked to our connected team who saw activation rates and mileage and everything just kind of shoot through the roof. Uh, but I do think you're, you're spot on where there's people who are dusting off shoes in their closets and getting out there and just trying to run with whatever's available now. And they're, I think they're going to be dying to, you know, <laughs> get in the run special in Charm City and get, get in the right pair of shoes or get an upgrade. And I think, you know, once they realize just what a energy release it is and how positive influence it is on their day, you know, hopefully there's that halo effect where they don't revert to old habits and running just becomes a part of their, their normal lives again. Yeah. And being in the right shoe makes a ton of difference in yeah. how much you enjoy that run. Yeah. So, you know, hopefully, hopefully they're getting some guidance somewhere. Maybe, yeah. maybe they're checking out the website. Maybe, maybe they're, watching a program like this on, on live, but you know, they have to yeah. get out there. So subjective too. I know there's, you know, great shoes, you know, from competitors and stuff like us where, you know, the consensus is it's a great shoe. It wins awards. And I just try running and it. it's just like, it just doesn't work. So even if, you know, a shoe's great, it has to be right for that runner, I think. Yeah, absolutely. And that is the thing, you know, even with our reviews, we always talk about is subjective. Mm -hmm. So we pick out what we like as a preference. And I think as our audience gets to know us and know what our preferences are, if they have similar preferences, then we're the right badge for them. If, if not, you know, they're, they're, there's other places to go. Yeah. But um, yeah, so that's awesome. And uh, let's, let's see here. And I'm going to remind people, if you want to ask a question, um, go ahead to that little question mark within a box on top of another box and get it. We have a couple here, so I will pop that up. 
Hopefully it's not just Jared asking what flavor taco you like. But okay. This one's a pretty easy one. Yeah. I mean, we work with Jamie here and she sees the shoes and yeah. you'll probably see some more be uh, believe in the run under armor reviews. Um let's see here. Let's see. This I'll let you answer this one. Uh, so what separates Under Armour running shoes from all other brands and their designs? Uh, I think there's a few things really in our favor. Uh, first of all, I've never been at a brand that's so like athlete driven and just obsessed with making the athlete better and, and hyper focused on finding the right uh, product solution for them. So, you know, like I said, it started in late September, and within two weeks, we were down in Flagstaff working with you know Rachel Schneider and Emily Durgan and the rest of the team there on you know some prototypes they had been running in but also what were their current and that kind of red thread and that relationship has continued throughout so every project we're working on if we're doing a machina and we have three of our pro athletes who are in it we're going to get their insights not necessarily to say you know we need to tailor to their nuances but what are those commonalities where you know if it performs at an elite level it's definitely going to perform for the masses so i'd say you know we're an athlete driven company and I'd say, hey, we got a, a truly winning product experience. Like I said, I think that that big product reset we've done as far as, you know, settling on a distinct fit, uh, really fine tuning our technology. And we saw it at the running event this year in Austin, Texas, where we had people trying on the Machina and the reaction was people who had not been in Under Armour for a while, you know, just ditching all preconceived notions, put it on and like, this is a pretty kick-ass shoe here and they'd love the experience. So I'd say, you know, we're winning on experience and also that athlete connection to me are the two big differentiators, of course, along with connected fitness. Well, I'm, I'm gonna add a, a secondary question onto that then. Are most of the athletes that we see down in Flagstaff or your elite athletes, are they wearing customized shoes or are those out of the box what you'd be getting at These the are, retail? Uh, they're definitely out of the box. So, you know, Jamie and the sports marketing team do, you know, if the Machin is coming out in February, they're probably gonna get it in March but they're getting factory production. Uh, what is different though, is as we develop different prototypes in a shoe like the Machina or the Infinite, you know, if we know that they're a neutral runner or they're, you know, need guidance, they're testing those shoes for us if, they're, they, if they could work it in their training regimen. So they're trying different iterations, but once we get to the final product, we're making, you know, they're running in the production shoes. Oh, cool. All right, let's go back here and see some more. Here you go. Everybody wants to know this from every brand. Uh, Carbon, <laughs> it's, it's definitely. Where's your super shoe? Yeah, it, it's been something that, you know, at Under Armour, we kind of look at it of, you know, all of a sudden carbon is the biggest buzzword, just like barefoot or minimalism. So we kind of see it out there and try not to say it's like, let's race to the market and see what we need for, for a carbon plated racer but saying, taking a step back and saying, well, what do rut runners really want in this? What are they really going after? Is it the experience? Is it the efficiency and all that? And so I think for us, you know, there's definitely discussions of how we're approaching this, uh, but we're looking at it for more about not to follow the market, but how can we lead with kind of that experience that people are creating out, that one out there as far as propulsion, efficiency, and being lightweight. So, so more to come on that stuff, but it's, you know, we don't live in a vacuum. We definitely know what's going on in the marketplace now. Well, it's funny from a consumer side of thing, we're watching everybody sort of chase that, you know, the vapor fly came out and like every company's kind of yeah. try, trying to chase it. And then it makes you wonder while you're chasing something, if you're not looking for the solution to like the innovation solution. Yeah. So, I'm like, what's going to be next? Once people get all over this plate of things, what are we going to see uh, coming out? And how are we going to see these things change yeah. and move away from the plate? And I'm excited for, for the day that happens. Yeah. And I think both you, have I, and you and I have seen the pendulum swing from minimalism back to kind of maximalist and now carbon plated is kind of the zeitgeist. But I think every time it swings, it leaves a little something that runners love, whether it's lightweight or super plush or yeah. back. So I think as things swing back, we're hopefully ahead of the curve with what we have coming down the pike. And that that is it. I mean, my favorite thing that came out of Born to Run mm -hmm. was the Kimbara, a yeah. lightweight, you know, shoe with cushioning. Yeah. It, and it, it, it had a natural feel. I don't think that would have been like in the designer's mind without the trend of barefoot minimalism and all that stuff. So 
you know, I, I think you're right. Stuff does stick out of the trends is good. All right, what's your do it all shoe from UA? Do it all shoe, uh, a little subjective here, but I'll throw it out there that I think the Sonic to me is, is kind of that, that workhorse that's really, you know, somewhat underrated, I think in the marketplace, just because it's lightweight, it's highly cushioned, it's got an amazing heel fit, uh, super breathable upper that adapts to the foot. So, you know, just because of the price point, it's $110, which is super accessible for a lot of runners. But we have some of our best cases. This is our high mileage workhorse. So I kind of look at the Sonic as, you know, it's our longest last high performance too, as we work on the fifth iteration. Uh, but there's something about that experience where we've definitely honed into, uh, and it just creates a huge range of versatility. So I'd say that is our, our do-it-all workhorse in the lineup. And you're saying you're in the fifth iteration of the Sonic now, right? We're, we're starting the, the process for spring summer 22 on that. Uh, I'm guessing uh, if I could look into the future, would it be lighter weight? <laughs> <laughs> I'll invite you to the next meeting, but that's the right track. All right. There we go. Let me see. I have some of these. They, da, 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 I got to read them first. Yeah. All right. I'll, we'll throw this one up there. I think it's going to be the same answer. Casual new one who wants a new runner for that. Uh, and it's structurally, it's Under Armour works a little differently too, is, you know, we're part of this, what we call kind of this, this mega group that's based out of Portland where, you know, I'm kind of working on the high performance end of athlete driven product that we can bring to the masses through our lineup. And then on the other end, we kind of run it through the spectrum and we have someone working on the versatile line. So shoes like the infinites and then the for future, future seasons, we're actually taking these technical bottoms and more lifestyle driven uppers on them. Uh, and so we have a shoe out there, the Phantom, that was originally a connected shoe and kind of we launched that, which has an amazing hover platform, but then the upper has these super cool interpretive iterations, you know, knit materials, uh, really cool PPU features. So if you're looking for something that's more style driven, but still has that running underfoot, it's them is a pretty, pretty cool stylish shoe. I have to say for casual wear, the Phantom is super cush, super comfortable. Uh, you know, it's a little, for my taste, I'm more on your taste with the running uh, shoe. I like a little, little lighter, a little more minimal. It's a little much for me, but yeah, it's for comfort wise, the style, it's pretty slick. Yeah. Let's see. All right. This sounds like somebody you might know. <laughs> uh, what is the threat? Chris from Marathon Sports, what is the strategy to get into more run specialty doors? Uh, that's definitely part of this. Uh, you know, we have a team in Baltimore that's devoted strictly to run strategy, who heads up our offense there. I think right now we're trying to, you know, walk before we sprint. I think a lot of times in the past we've kind of spread ourselves pretty thin, and then kind of the impact is, is really low volume across when you look at it as a nation but we've definitely concentrated on a few doors as we we kind of get this figured out and build the team and that's where we've seen the greatest returns and the biggest partnerships so charm city run in baltimore of course has been you know a partner since day one so they're phenomenal naperville running in chicago uh working more closely with places like uh run flagstaff and that so i, I think it's one of those things we we're starting to, to draw the dots and make connections but run specialty is definitely a priority Great. And you got to have somebody in Austin with Matt My Run there, right? Yeah, we got a great Austin connection too with Fleet Feet down there and the whole raw running crew. Yeah. All right. Um, we got this one's also, we got a lot of carbon plate ones in here. Um, I, I'm going to throw you up a, a lob. Okay. There you go. <laughs> uh, Favorite shoe color, blue. Yeah, I, I, I'd say there's a lot of different iterations of blue, but uh, yeah, I, I tend to stay in that realm. But color is always, as you know, everyone knows from a brand, definitely a, you know, a topic of discussion. And, you know, it's something where we work with a color team in New York City. And, you know, Under Armour, of course, is grounded in, you know, the athlete. So we're trying to find what's the best expression of, of sport and performance that we can bring to color every season. Uh, but yeah, I'm involved in color. So always a fun part of the discussion. But Blue is a pretty good go-to for me. Uh, <laughs> I don't know why yeah. you got that question, but there you go. Um, so I don't know if you're involved with the trail team and Topher and that side. Yeah. Um, do you know what's going on with the trails? 
Totally. Uh, trail is an exciting endeavor for us. You know, we have some amazing athletes with E. Wang in California and Brian Tolbert in Utah. And so... Best you know, mustache in the business. Yeah, yeah. He, he really owns it. But uh, most immediately for fall, winter 20, Whoa. we're going to be launching a trail version of the Machina. So spring, summer 20, there's your road version. Keeping the same midsole, it's going to be the Machina off-road. So really cool gear, you know, on the upper, it's going to be more protected with storms. So DWR, water treatment, gusseted tongue, and so wings in there. So you get a lot, a lot of lockdown and keeps greed out. On the outsole, we use a V-Rim light base with mega grip. So really made for some tough, gnarly tail, trails. So really a cool shoe where you get maximum cushioning, full hover, and then a really, really grippy outsole. So yeah, for guys, Brian Tolbert in Utah on some pretty rugged trails, this is a great go-to option for them. Uh, for our velocity trainer that we have currently coming out in the market, there's also going to be a trail version of this for, for fall, winter 20. So once again, adding a Viva Mouthsole to it, this is the road version. Uh, more protected upper, taking some of our great innovation from road, bringing it over to trail. And then, you know, of course, looking at future seasons, you know, I think trail, there's big upside there. So it's definitely something that's on our radar as far as what can we do with innovation with partners like Ebram and doing something trail specific. And, you know, we got athletes out there winning races very quietly. You know, it's, it's one of those things where they deserve to be in the best category leading products. So we're, I think we're, we're looking in that direction. Yeah. And you threw out there uh, the storm fabric with the DRW for the yeah. people that uh, aren't as in the lingo. That's basically a, um, an applied to the fabric waterproof, yeah. waterproofing or water repellent material, yeah. right? Water repellent. Uh, you know, it doesn't have a full booty in that, so it's not technically considered waterproof, like a true Gore-Tex shoe. But if you're out there in nasty conditions, it's going to keep your foot dry, uh, keep you protected from the conditions. Yeah, maybe help you clean the mud off easier. Exactly. Yeah, it's important to do. Yeah. All right. Awesome. Let's see here. Got more carbon plate uh, questions and stuff like that, but um, I... I don't even know if this one makes sense. With foot pods and GPS watch, do you find a feature? Yeah, go ahead, Doug, take this one. Yeah, no, it, it's one of those things too. I think, you know, there's a lot going on there with, with technology, but the big unique thing about connected fitness is you don't need to watch. Uh, all you need is, you know, sync it to your phone with the app and it's already embedded in the shoes with the accelerometer. So you don't need a Garmin and some of those other features uh you know it is compatible with apple watch and some of those those other ones but that's what i think people really gravitate towards is just the simplicity of the app there's not a lot of things you know you sync it with your shoe once you sync it after runs and then you can track all your data right there have you been following what zwift is doing yeah no it's, it's pretty cool and that was kind of one of the themes of what we're dealing with now and kind of analyzing the market it's just like runners are finding a way whether it's indoors or outdoors and you know, Zwift is doing some pretty cool things there. So I think that's a pretty cool look into, you know, how, what running could look like in five years in one iteration. Well, I'm just saying you've already got, you know, the chip in there. Mm -hmm. uh, if it could sync up with your, with your Zwift. Yeah. Instead of having to put the exterior pod on. Yeah. yeah. I mean, obviously the, the pods and the, the Zwift thing aren't as accurate as the treadmill uh, counter. Yeah. I, there was, you, you were at Trey this past fall. They had yeah. the uh, exhibit and you probably saw some people trying to take down the mile. Yeah. It was, it was pretty cool. It's super cool. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Um, the rest of the questions are all carbon plates. What, <laughs> what do you get carbon plates there? And I think we answered that one. Um, we're going to go ahead and take this and we'll, we have uh, Rachel who's recording it on a computer. So you won't have words all over your face, but we'll put it into uh, YouTube okay. and people will be able to rewatch it there. Obviously, it'll be available here on our channel for the next 24 hours. So if there's people who missed it, they want to come back, they can hit it in our stories and check it out. But uh, I want to say thanks, Doug, for coming on. It's very interesting to see and the commitment that Under Armour has to, you know, the run, you know, segment of the athletes that they, they're working with. And uh, it's exciting to have someone with your experience in, in all these different shoe companies to come in and, and add your your style to to the Under Armour shoes. So we're looking forward to definitely seeing how you impact the brand. Yeah, thanks so much. This is a lot of fun. Awesome, cool. Well, I'll let you get back to your Corgi okay. and you can enjoy, enjoy the rest of the day. One of these days, I'm sure you'll get back in the office, right? Yeah, someday.
Yeah. All right. Well, I will, if I see Jamie out on the uh, bricks, I'll tell her you say hi. Excellent. Appreciate it, Thomas. All right. It was great talking to you. I'll talk to you soon. Yeah.